Hey guys, welcome to my 3D model scaling video. I get a lot of emails from people asking if I can make one of my 3D models smaller or larger, or if I can make a model in 148th scale, 124th scale, and so on. This video is meant to teach you how to do these scaling operations on your own. It's really simple. I'll be showing you a special calibration tool I developed that enables you to quickly and accurately resize and save your models to any scale ratio. Some people don't understand that the default scale of a 3D print model is completely flexible. They think because a model is larger than their 3D printer that they can't print it. Guys, think of the default scale of an STL or OBJ as a mere suggestion. It's irrelevant. The size of a 3D part is absolutely inconsequential and totally malleable, so don't let the size of a model prevent you from working with it. Let me teach you how to scale your models. Okay guys, let's go ahead and jump right into this. We're talking about scaling. I'm showing you some tricks, and I'm showing you a new calibration tool I developed. So we're doing three things here with this tutorial. We're going to talk about scaling to the build plate, that's easy, you guys have all done this. We're going to scale to an existing figure. We'll be using calipers for this, measuring a little little figure. And we're going to scale to standardized ratios. That's like um, 148th, 124th, 1, 1 144th, 112, stuff like that. Just standard ratios. We're making it really easy by using a calibration tool that I made. And we are doing all of this in Cura. So what we're going to do here first is open up just a sample here. I think I've got, uh, which one was I going to use? I was going to use a, a, my Close Encounters of the Third Kind model. Now a lot of guys will ask me how big the model is. How big is this model? Will it fit my build plate? Well, it's scale to 12 inches. So if you have something like a, whoops, let me go ahead and pull up my profile for the, uh, my CR10S4. So this will fit the CR10S4. Actually, I just, let's go ahead and work with an Ender, small bill plate. So if I wanted to print this all in one piece, I know from experience that the Ender has a build volume for a flat disc of something about 210 millimeters. I'm over here. You're going to want to pay attention to my scale, scale icon right here. I'm putting in 210. Uniform scale is checked. And I know that, uh, maybe not. Let's go ahead and scale it down to 200 millimeters. Okay, I can maximize that just a little bit more. But over here in my scale at this size can print comfortably on that ender. I am at 55.52%. Pay attention to that. So if I'm going to print, oops, if I'm going to print this guy at that scale, 55.2, anything else from that model is going to be scaled with that ratio. Let's get him out of our way. Bring this guy in. This will fit just like it is, but you don't want to print it at that scale. I want to come over here in the ratio box. 55.52. So. 55.52. And everything else I bring in is going to be scaled at this ratio. Okay, that's easy. You guys have all done that. Easy peasy. Let's move on to scaling to an existing figure. Okay, let's take the example that you have a figure. Let's say it's this little green guy. We're going to use some calipers. We're going to get a measurement on his height. We're just going to pretend like he's a six foot tall alien. All right, here's our little figure sample. We're going to be scaling a truck model to this guy. We're going to pretend he's six feet tall in scale. I've got a pair of calipers here. Make sure it's teared to zero. I'm on the millimeter calibration. 
and I've got his height at 47.7. Okay, so we are going to scale this truck to the green figure. So we know that the green figure is a certain height in millimeters. This is where we're going to use that calibration tool I was telling you about. Okay, so the calibration folder has two models in it. It's got a calibration group. It has a single silhouette model. We're going to grab for this our single, single silhouette model. So we're going to make sure that we get him oriented properly. And we're going to scale him to the measurement that we took. Okay, I enlarged this truck just for this sample purpose. So we know that our real figure that we want to scale this truck to, we're not going to change the size of the figure. We want to change the size of the truck. But we need this figure to be the right scale. Back over to the scale icon. Right now, this figure is 91.7. We're making him 47.7 millimeters tall. That's the green Z. Uh, make sure that your uniform scaling is always checked. So we're not going to mess around with the figure scale anymore. That's how big our green guy is. We want to print this truck in scale with the green dude. So we're going to take, again, our scale icon. And we're going to shrink him down. We're going to shrink it to, a, that's about, those are big trucks. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little smaller. Okay, so that is, to me, that's about right for this truck. Maybe actually a little bit bigger. Okay, so I know now that this truck is going to be printing at 131.51 to its original size. Let's grab a more dramatic example. This is another one of my projects. This is the uh, this is the head to an ATST. So let's say that we want to print this to that green guy. We want to put that green guy in the cockpit over here to the scale icon. Gonna, whoops! I'm going to shrink him down to something that seems right for this figure. That's almost right. Uh, a little bigger? Maybe? I'm not sure exactly how big these are supposed to be. I can kind of play around here. I can bring this guy and just kind of like play around and see if that would make sense. That That makes sense to me. Okay, so I know now every time for every part of this model, we're checking over here, we're at 60.87%. So everything else I bring in for this model, if I'm gonna print it in scale for this guy, I'm scaling it down to 60.87. I hope that makes sense. You know, I just realized that I totally spaced out showing you how to save these. So once you, you worked really hard getting your your part scaled properly. I know for this project, for the ATST, it's going to be 60.87%. I'm going to take a note of that. I'm going to write that down on a piece of paper so I don't forget. So every part is going to be scaled down, brought in individually. You can do it as a group also, but I'm just going to do this individually. So to save this, say I don't want to print it right now. Say I want to save all the parts at this particular scale. All I need to do is go over to File, Export. I want to export an STL. I've got options here. I've got a STL binary, the STL ASC2. That's the one I use, the ASC2 STL. I've got a Wavefront OBJ. Um, I just go ahead and save these as STL file ASC and just give it a new name this will be called resized atst head and that's it takes a minute to save that out 
depending on how complex your model is. And there you go. You have your new file saved, rescaled part that's in scale with green alien dude. All right, I hope that all makes sense. Let's go ahead and move on to the most important part of this tutorial. All right, now we're going to scale to standardize ratios by using the calibration, calibration figures group. And here it is. I'm going to be careful not to mess around with its scale. So we have a 1 12th figure in this set, a 1 24th, a 1 35th, got to keep zooming in here, 1 48th, 1 72nd, a 1 87th, 1 96th, even tinier, 1 1 20th. Now the Kraken model is a really big model. It is a studio scale model. And luckily I've got a figure that's included with the model. So these are at default scale, which is pretty big, but we are gonna shrink this down. Luckily also, I've got a separate chair. So if you didn't have a figure with your model, with your digital model, just use something else, like I did with the uh, the ATST example. Just get a roundabout scale. If you have a chair, scale it to the chair. So. We don't need the chair because we have the figure. So we are going to figure out the reduction ratio to get to a 1 48th scale. And we are going to start shrinking him so that he matches that 1 48th figure. So where were we with 1 48th? There we are right here. That is actually pretty darn good start start scale. Okay, so he's a little small. I'm gonna grab my scale icon again and just bring him up to where he's matching the size of that one forty eighth calibration. Just gonna kind of get him up here, and that looks pretty good. He's a little big still, so I'm gonna come over, shrink him just a just a hair. Pretty close. Shrink just a little more. And I think we got it. I'd say that's close enough. So over here, I can see that my shrink ratio is 21.94. So I know that everything I bring in here is going to be scaled to 21.94. Just as, as an example, let's go ahead and bring in the canopy. I think that's this piece here. Okay, so this canopy now, I know, needs to shrink to be in 148th scale, 21.94. So I got it highlight. I've got my scale icon indicated 21.94. Enter, and there it is. That is now scaled at 1 48th. Okay, I'm going to go to my export menu under edit I'm sorry under file export and just export that new STL ASC2 and uh, that's it 
I'd like to show you one more thing you can do with this calibration set is you can figure out the scale of a model that you don't know the scale for. And to make this even more confusing, here's the Bird of Prey uh, Studio Scale to what ILM built Studio Scale. Um, this is another one of my models. I'll put a link in this description. This is an incredible model, by the way. Boy, oh boy, is this magnificent. So I never knew what scale it was. I mean, nobody really does because <laughs> the big joke on Star Trek is the scale just changes from movie to movie. In Star Trek 3, it's probably this 187th scale. Um, and then at the beginning of Star Trek 4, it's more like, I don't know, 172nd scale. It's crazy. And then Next Generation, man, it's more like it's over here at 160th. So that's just kind of a, this is kind of a joke. But this will allow you to identify the scale of a digital model if you really don't know and would like to know. Just bring up this calibration set and compare it and figure it out. Okay, I think that's it. I think I'm done showing off this, uh, this new calibration tool. I'll leave a link in the description on uh, where to get this. I hope this scaling video was helpful to you. If you find this content helpful, consider hitting the subscribe button to see more pro tips. Thanks for watching.